Kansas City. We're here with the Fuji X100F and we're going to put it through its paces. So we're going to be going to a wedding and then we're going to see what we come up with without using any kind of flash whatsoever. It'll be all natural lighting. Then we're going to test with the high ISOs as well. Then later on we'll take a look around the sites of Kansas City both in the daytime and we're going to come back later on in the evening and come up with, I got a feeling, some really beautiful images. So you don't want to miss this. So thank you very much and hope you enjoy Kansas City as much as I am. So let's take a look at a few of the things that I found really helpful when I was using this camera. When you go into the drive mode here, here's where you have a lot of choices, whether you're doing a still single image or you want to do continuous shooting and I also did a few movies on here and the thing that's nice about this as I was at the wedding I actually went from still mode single taking a single image a few of them anyway and then I quick switched into the movie mode and I was doing movies in probably just a couple seconds later and I do like using Fuji's advanced filters also I I'm a sucker for all these neat little effects that you can do with this camera inside the camera so you don't have to worry about post-production kind of neat and of course you have all these other you can do your panoramas here also and and all different uh, types of bracketing that you can do with this camera i just got to really like this camera quite a bit now the fuji has a 23 millimeter lens which is equivalent to a full frame of 35 millimeter and that's always a popular focal length among people that do street photography and candid shooters. However, I like something a little bit wider on many occasions. And they do offer a wide any telephoto conversion lens. So I think that's something really worth considering. And one thing that's especially nice is that all your controls are really easy to get to. So whether you want to shoot manual or aperture priority, it's really quick and easy to change your settings here. And on top here, you have the dial that combines your ISO setting with your shutter speed. And when you set it to A for automatic, you can choose from auto, ISO, or you can set it to command. And command lets you change your ISO setting by rotating the front command dial. And you can also change your ISO setting by lifting the dial and just rotating to the ISO that you want. And on the right side here you have your EV control where you can do your, your compensation over here. Where you put it on to C and then you can quickly see what you're getting by looking through the viewfinder. So when you set your dial to C then you can use your command dial in front and you can see what you're getting. You can make the adjustment and choose the exposure that you want. So let's take a look at some more photos so you could see the quality of images that this camera is capable of reproducing. So I had my brother-in-law show me some of the sites of Kansas City and then here we're at a park that was near where he grew up in. So we saw this young lady that was hitting the bag and we just started talking to her and I asked her if I could take some photos and she said sure. Because when you're photographing a fast moving situation like in this case, she's just hitting the bag really quick back and forth jumping around. I decided to use continuous shooting. I forgot exactly what it was that I set it at. But it was a whole lot more than I usually do. And these are some of the photographs that I took from it. And there was a thin tower behind here. So I just took that out real quick. And then some of the images here you could see I enhanced. I maybe increased the contrast just a little bit. And then I went into Smart Photo Editor and also made a few 
more special effects that you see here. And I really like the way this black and white turned out, so I put this onto a white matte type of a border. And then she was telling me about her tattoo, so I just asked if I could take more of a close-up. So I just had her next to the tree here, leaning in front, just being able to show her tattoo. So I took several, and then I made this one into a black and white, and this is one that was one of my favorites with this session. So here we are a little bit before the wedding, and we had some spare time before we were leaving for the wedding. So I figured this would be a great time to test out the camera. So here I was by myself. I put the camera on the table. I set it to manual focus, and this is in my hotel room using just window light only. There was no other lights, no backlighting, no reflector even. And the first image here you can see right out of the camera. And the second one I cropped just a little bit. And I also vignetted the corners just a little bit too. And then cropping just a little bit closer, made it into a black and white. So here we are at the wedding. And I'm the uncle of the groom. I'm not the official photographer here. They had a wonderful photography crew and also a video crew. I spoke with them beforehand just to make sure I don't get in their way, interfere with anything. So I didn't really photograph anything that they set up because I, I really appreciate when people do that when I was photographing all these weddings. Sometimes other people taking photographs without even realizing it, they get in their way and they really disturb the flow of the event. So I didn't want to do that. So I just took a few photographs here. So anyway, looking at the musicians here, I decided to start with ISO 3200, a 60th of a second handheld f-stop was f4. And, and then I looked at it and I figured, wow, we can go up to 64. So for most of the photographs that I took, I used 6400 ISO and then I put it on F2.8. Like in this case here, we had the father walking down with the bride. And I wanted to see if I can get a combination of a few still images and then all of a sudden switched to movies. So that's what I did. So I took this one quick. And here I was set to ISO 6400, an 80th of a second. I was still at F4 for this one. So when the priest gives his sermon here, we start at 3200, and then I move it to 6400. With all the images that I took throughout the whole trip, I was really, really amazed with the clarity of this lens. So then I wanted to test the ISO even more, and then I bumped it up to 12,800. And then I figured, let's go all the way to 25,600 ISO. And here we were able to shoot at a 1 850th of a second. Pretty amazing. And this church is relatively dark here. And we're still, again, at F2.8. And then when a priest announces the bride and groom and they kiss, I decide that I'm going to take the rest as you're coming back down the aisle. I'm going to take the rest in video. So here we're looking at an image that I was taking off the video clip. And I got to tell you, I was really surprised at how sharp this image was taken from a movie clip. And then here you can see some of the effects. So I just thought that that was really amazing, the clarity of this image. So usually I was never that happy with the Fujis because some of the Fujis that I have, I don't think the video quality is up to standard as maybe some other brands or at least up to the standard that their still images are because their still images are really spectacular. But here, I was pretty impressed with the video quality.